Hello Inside Real Estate, this is Annalisa and I am going to show you how to create a Bionic link. Here we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is walk you through how you can actually create, edit, and add tracking elements to a manual link. And this is going to allow you to actually build a link on the front side of your site and affect change on that bed and bath quantity prices, uh, how it displays when somebody clicks on the link initially, the display sort, and also adding in these elements of tracking with the source, hashtag, and adding in that delayed registration on a manually created link. So there's some really good uh, information here that's going to enhance what I also spoke to uh, with the anatomy of a link a little while back, which will be uh, linked at the bottom of this sheet. Now, if you have questions while I'm speaking, uh, this is live on one of the groups, so I can't see your questions, but I will loop back to you when this is concluded. All right, so let's get going. In this particular example, I went to the front side of my domain and I performed a search for listings in the Bronx that are near parks. And this was my result. So when I click on this, it's going to take me to my own domain tied to me as an agent. And it's showing me 118 listings in the Bronx that are close to a park. So this is something you could look at as well uh, if you want to get into some different type of amenities or ways to attract buyers to your site, different types of uh, information grabs, right? So in this case, what I want to do is build a different link because we do have the technology to do that. So my goal here is to take the link of which I created and add a source code of Bronx Park because I want to be able to track the element of how did it perform? Uh, you know, what was my click per sign up? How is it coming through? Are people responding to it? I also want to be able to adjust my views to two instead of an immediate registration. I want to add a hashtag of Bronx near park so I can identify all of these folks as they land on my dashboard, which of course can then, you know, that hashtag can trigger a drip campaign, it can trigger a alert, and it can also be used uh, you know, as a mass email, mass text tool. And last but not least, I want to edit my link so it displays the default to map instead of grid or list. So now I'm gonna go over all of this so you kind of know how it all relates and, and how to break down a domain and read it. Because initially, you know, when you look at this link, uh, you might be going, oh, that's a lot of something, but what is it, right? So we're gonna break down what these elements mean and where you can actually pop in and edit this information. So let's talk about how it all relates first. So I created a key to break down the elements of a link. So at the beginning of everyone's domain, uh, depending on if you're an office, team, or agent, you're always going to see either the brokerage name.com or the team name.com or the team name.brokers and then uh, the agent will have the agent name and then their brokerage name.com. So in this example, I'm an agent on Elisa who works for Orange Eco MLS. So all of my links that I create off of my dashboard will be preceded by this string of information. And what that does is it ties it solely to me and directs people only to me when they click this link. So this is a way that you can you know, leverage your own dashboard, leverage your own lead gen, and make sure you're directing leads to you. Now, as we look at the different elements within a link, there are all these little different segments that start with a little and percent. So we can adjust the bed and bath. We can adjust the min and max. Uh, we can add in the and percent PPC equals to add in a source code, et cetera. We can add in this little view timing equals to create a timing delay on when people need to register. We can add a hashtag. So these are all elements we can grab and drop onto a link we manually created. Now, there is a little bit of uh, a menu here when we get to the sort by, because the sort by here is actually, is it, is it going to sort by default by high to low? low to high, bed, bath, footage, acreage, reductions, days on website, 
etc. So when we look at the link of which I had created and break it down, we can see I've got this pink on Lisa Orange Eco LMS matches up to the domain because I tried to color code these. The bed and bath are elements of which you can edit. The min and max are elements of which you can edit. The type of how it's displayed, whether it's grid, map, or list is, is editable. The sort by. The PPC equals, which is your source code. The and view timing is the delay registration. And this last one, HTT, the add HT equals, is the hashtag. So you can kind of see how all of these are fitting in together. So when we read this link, we can say, okay, it's going to the agent. It is displaying the area of the Bronx. It is going to be pulling uh, all bed and bath, all min and max. It's going to be pulling all footage, all type of acreage, and your built walk score keywords. And the keyword is amenities close to park. And then we can see I wanted to go out as a grid initially. I want to sort by a percentage of high to low or low to high, and I'm dropping in a uh, hashtag, source code, and adjustment on my viewing. So now we actually need to edit this link. So I'm going to grab a copy of it. And I'm just going to place it right below. And I'm going to remove all of the uh, formatting here, just from this one. So now here is the raw link that, that uh, we have. And I can show you how you add these elements in. So. When we look at this, you know, of course, we have the subdomain or the domain of which is going to be directed. And when you have your link uh, editable like this, you can actually place your cursor in and say, well, actually, you know what? Within this, I only want to get a minimum three bed, two bath. And of course, you could have put this in on the front side search, but maybe you forgot and you just want to pop these in. No big deal. Uh, maybe you only want to capture things from 300,000 to 600,000 in this particular poll. And we can leave the square footage and acreage, we'll leave that for now. Uh, and then when we get to this and R type grid, this is where we can actually enter in grid, map, or list. So when we're looking at the website and we're looking at a default, this is the grid view. It's three across or four across, depending on the template of which you've chosen to use. Or there's a list view where you have the tile of the home on the left and a description to the right, or you have a map view. And you can change the default on how these land just by changing up that simple and R type equals. And then we could put in grid, we could type in, let's say we want to have it be a map, or we could just type in list. So you've got these options you can manipulate. Next, we can look at the ampersand sort by equals. And right now I have the listing history in here. So the listing history is going to be reductions. So I have it sorting by reductions right now. But let's say I wanted to change this up and I actually uh, want to do this by high to low, low to high, or popularity. Uh, so if I wanted to pull the popularity, I would pull the ampersand sort by equals listings and then the dot visit percentage 20 DESC. Copy that. And then I can go into this, find the area where that starts, the sort by right here. Start at the ampersand and replace that string. So now we have it sorting by map and by the popularity. Next, let's say we want to add in a hashtag or a source code. So with that, we just take the ampersand PPC equals, which is your source code, 
when we look up, let's see here, right, so where to go, right here. And I want to add in Bronx Park as my source code because I want to recognize uh, how this ad might be performing wherever I'm placing it. Now I'm going to look at my ad stats. So that's where you would have your add in your ampersand PPC equals, and then whatever you want to name your source code. So when you create a squeeze page uh, that has a source code, this is exactly where it's landing in the link when you type it in when you're building a squeeze. We're just creating it manually right here. Next, we can affect the timing by dropping in the ampersand view underscore timing equals, and then how many times do you want it to be delayed? So it could one, two, let's say I want to delay it to two. I can just put a two there. Last but not least, I can add a hashtag. So that's when I drop in the ampersand, a d d h t equals, and then whatever I want my hashtag or that trackable element to be on my dashboard. Because I can, you know, uh, leverage these hashtags with lists, mass emails, uh, mass texts, on the dialer, on the, the on your mobile device, on the on the uh, app. So there's a lot of ways in which you can use the hashtag in addition to building it in just as like a, a trackable list. So now that we've gone through and changed this link from just a simple link pulling in the Bronx uh, near parks. We have now altered this, so it's going to pull all of the homes in the Bronx near a park that have three bed, two bath minimum between three and 600,000. And then it's also going to change up the view and show a default by map. It's going to sort by popularity and it's going to build in the timing the hashtag, and the source code. So now we're ready to take this link, copy it, and post it to our social media of choice. So I'm going to go ahead and pop into the group here. And you can actually take the link and drop it into uh, Facebook or anywhere you want to drop it into um, your social media of, of choice. Once you add it into Facebook and this link manifests and you see your domain or subdomain here right below the photo, and sometimes Facebook won't load the photo, it's not something we can control, but as long as you can see your domain here, you're good to go. Uh, this, as soon as this manifests, you can get rid of this area up here. So maybe it's like, you know, uh, listings close to this park. You know, maybe this is where you're going to walk your dog or something. And then you can just post it. So when people are going through, the, through Facebook or wherever you have it posted, they can click on this. It's going to direct them directly to you to see those results. And I have it coming up as a map view. So they have like the overall view of like, okay, well, I actually live in East Bronx and there's four listings kind of close, or maybe I live up in Woodlawn Heights. You can see three listings. So they have that top down view here to see those listings around parks. Now, if we look at the list view here, we can see that with the Bronx near parks, three bedroom, two bath, 300 to 600,000, we have 83 results. Previously, we had 118 before we did any editing. So you can kind of see how you can parse things down, get a little more nitty gritty and make something custom. Now, what do we do with it now that we've built it? So the first thing I would suggest is save it because there's a lot of different ways you can leverage all of this content of which you're creating every day, whether it is a squeeze page, landing page, blog, custom page, maybe you're adding information to your landing pages for SEO. These are all things that you can kind of keep in mind and keep logged for future reference. So what I used to do is I would just copy the link and I would do this for landing pages uh, most of the time, but this might be a good customized link to save for future purposes. And I would just open up a Google Sheet because these travel with you on your mobile device, so you can access them on the go or at home or at work. 
and I would just create a spreadsheet. And basically, I would be like, where, why, what, link. You know, just the basics. So I could just drop my link right here. And then I could say, where, the Bronx, near parks. And I guess I don't need a what. Uh, but you kind of get the idea of what you can do here, because now we have this created. We don't need to create it again because we spent some time doing this. So why not save it on a sheet so you can come back to it and use it again and again and again. And it's the same thing when you create your landing pages. You can say where, why, link. And this gives you the ability to build in all of these tools so you're not recreating the wheel every time. Now, if you have any questions, I'm going to loop back into the group and take care of those in the comments. I do encourage you to check out the anatomy of a link. Uh, there is uh, the video on YouTube, and there's also a link to the sheet of which holds all of the directions and the anatomy of links. So how you break things down, commonly asked questions, or how do you find your domain and subdomain and so forth. So check both of these out. Feel welcome to uh, tag me if you have any questions. Or if you need technical assistance, please chat with support at the bottom right-hand side of your dashboard. I hope you have a great rest of the day.